They are members of Critical Role, where they voice the characters Vex and Vax. Uh, and these characters are even further fleshed out in a new book from Critical Role called Vox Machina, Kith and Kin. The author is Marika Nykamp. You could find it everywhere today. It's out right now. So please welcome to the stream, Laura Bailey and Liam O'Brien. Hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> I like your dances that you did. Really excited. Uh, I got a copy of the book right here. Uh, really excited this came out today. Ah! Huge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huge. First, uh, I want to talk to you both being the characters that voice the primary characters in this book. Um, do you know how the idea got originated to turn their story into a whole novel? Well, uh, Laura and I are big nerds who have loved fantasy most of our lives. And we kind of cut our teeth on fantasy novels uh, in the past. And, you know, we've been doing this critical role uh, tabletop adventure for years now. And I think it's been one of the things on our like dream list of things to do is sort of bring uh, our story back to to novels in in the same way that uh, we got yanked in, in into this sort of nerddom and, and and love of fantasy and we've apparently we fucking did it nope. how did we luck out though liam that it was the twins that got the book yeah. uh, was it us vying for it so hard it might have been. well i mean we've been talking about for years how much we love novels so maybe that's sunk in with people around us it's something we've been aiming at for years and years i mean not since the beginning. From the beginning, we were just at home eating nachos and, and playing this yeah. game. But what, what, as the things started to, you know, chug along the the, the road up the mountainside, we, we began to wonder, like, well, could we do this? Could we do that? And yeah. I, it's just something that I've always, it's just been on my bucket list for, for the longest time. You know, uh, this book takes place, obviously, before the first campaign and everything and kind of gives readers a good idea of who these people are before they even start on their journey. Uh, but... From that perspective, uh, are these things that you two have thought about in voicing these characters before? I imagine voicing these characters and uh, creating this world around them, you had to do a lot of thinking about where they came from and who they are. Yeah, I mean, L Liam and I, you know, sat down for a long time uh, and just came up with what our backstory would be uh, over coffee breakfasts that we always went to the same cafe and, and ate and talked. Um and yeah, and it was it was kind of a dream come true. It, it kind of fleshed itself out as we were playing the game. And then when this book came around, uh, we got a chance to actually deep dive into some of that uh, <laughs> uh, deep dive into some of that stuff that we had talked about in the past and 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 flesh it out. Who came to you with the idea? Let's do a book. Um, how did you both get involved in that process? And also meeting the author, too. You know, we we basically live on top of each other, the eight members of Critical Role in our <laughs> growing company. And we talk to each other constantly. And it's been no secret to anyone that that a novel is something, a novel or more is something that we had uh, hopes and dreams for. So um wasn't any surprise to anyone uh, after a few years. Uh, Marika was, was chosen as the writer uh, just because... Um, well, we wanted somebody who was who obviously excellent at the job, but we it, it's such a big ask, a D and D campaign to know someone else's Dungeons and Dragons campaign or or any tabletop game, that's a that's a big ask. It's hours, hundreds of hours of storytelling that the eight of us did around the table. So we didn't really want to have to try to download that into someone's brain. And Mariko has wa had watched the whole show from the beginning. So she was there blow by blow with it and really was ready to go and up to speed when we began. Yeah. And so we, we lucked out that she's also a phenomenal writer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She sounds like the perfect fit. I mean, she's like a New York Times bestseller fantasy writer. So it's pretty phenomenal. Worked out really yeah. well for you guys. Sure did. <laughs> <laughs> There were steps to the process. In the beginning, um, we kind of had a loose meeting about the things we wanted to, to tackle and when-ish it would be. And then uh, Marika penned this amazing outline of, of the sort of ride we would go on with the twins. And, you know, there was a little bit of discussion at that stage as well. Um, and then she went away for a long time and wrote a draft and came back and we just had a massive tome, Laura and I to yeah. consume over a couple of weeks. 
Yeah, we we got to read every draft along the way and uh, make comments and notes uh, for things that, you know, stuck out that we really loved and stuff that maybe uh, wasn't exactly in character um, and and got to make tweaks and and give comments to her along the way, which is awesome. One thing I love about this novel is that it is there's so many, there are a few factors to why it is what it is. One of which is just, there's all these moments that Laura and I, again, over lunch or texting or playing the game together have, have agreed on and fleshed out over the years. So we knew that we wanted to touch on a lot of that stuff, but also just sort of the skeleton uh, for this story or where it's set is, is based. It kind of came from a single game that Matt ran for uh, myself and Ashley Johnson in the group. Um, Back when we were playing this game at home, we'd all get together and play for 12 hours straight. But there was one day where Ashley and I couldn't make it. And we were all sad sacks about it. And Matt said, well, I'll just run a game for you two only. So just show up at my place and we'll see what happens. And we're like, oh my God, you can do it just with two people. He's amazing. He's a wizard. (laughs) And uh, he, it was just Ashley and I sitting across a, from a uh, coffee table from Matt. And he began to unspool this story of uh, Vax's past connections to uh, a thieves guild, which is now a major part of our universe and this story. And, and then, and then we all got back together again we played many, many games. And then the game. And I knew nothing of it. (laughs) You kept it a secret from me. That's right. Well, brother. And then a year or two into the actual show, um, we've been playing for many hours in front of a camera and then, uh, Matt just sort of like rolled or dumped out this storyline that had existed one night years past. And in my back of my brain, I'm going like, Oh my God, what's this? Whoa, whoa, whoa. what did he say five years ago, six years ago? What's going on? Who's that? Okay. Okay. All right. Game face on. And now that plus all of these moments that Laura and I have discussed, uh, ad nauseum married together to make this novel. It's the nerd cycle of life. Those books made us nerds, and now we're making other nerds nerds. Yeah. A new, nerds. a new cabbage patch of nerds for the world uh, to see. I like that this is your symbol for a cabbage patch. <laughs> They're like little I can cabbages. See the cabbages. Like little, little cabbage children. <laughs> Please don't screen cap us. Please. <laughs> Did you play Dungeons and Dragons before you entered Critical Role? Why, yes, uh, John, I did uh, as a young lad play a decent amount of Dungeons and Dragons with my friends in grade school and high school. And I'm happy to have carried that tradition on to the present day. <laughs> that was beautiful. I didn't. <laughs> I had always I had always wanted to play, but uh, I didn't have like a group of friends that were interested in that. And me and my sister were like, maybe we can play. But is that weird if it's just the two of us? I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, the first time we actually got to sit around the table and, and play with each other. <laughs> <That's>, um, <laughs> it was a blast. It was so much better than I could have ever dreamed it being. You know, I've always been a fan of, of RPG like video games yeah. and realizing that it was, it was that, but so much more because I wasn't confined to this dialogue tree of options. I could do whatever I wanted to do. And uh, Matt would like go with it a hundred percent. It just, it's such a, a beautiful experience and it just opens up your brain in a way that it, it's not possible in any, anything else. In our first game, uh, where most of us were like, what is this? Laura just dropped in and started going. She was like, listen, I'm going to do the same thing I do in the voiceover booth and you can fucking keep up. We'll get left behind. Here we go. And we just chased after it <laughs> and never looked back. 